I just hit the record button. So there we are. All right, everyone. Welcome to, so I, I put a name against this thing, right? I was, I was thinking about what to call this. Um, so I called it Top of Mind is what I've called this one. Hey, Jen, how you doing? Uh, you are muted. Thank you so much. Um, because really the, the, the idea that I had was uh, collectively we can all jump on and share a little bit about what's going on in our world as real estate investors, obviously as people, uh, you know, mortgage holders, uh, you know, some of us are property managers, some are flippers, some of us are lenders, some of us are borrowers, but we're all involved in the real estate world. I hear a bit of a scratch, so I'm going to cruise through and see if we got mute. Okay, I'm just going through all the people right here. All right, fantastic. And let me see right there. Okay, good. All right, so chat wise, let me just flip over because we got two pages of people that are on here, which is fantastic. It's awesome. Going all around. Okay, there we go. We're going to mute you there. Les, I just hit the mute button for you, so you should be muted. And let me see if there's any more people right here. Okay, fantastic. So this is awesome. We got 28 people to start off. Last time, so I did this last Thursday, right around this time, around 2.30, and the secret sauce is this is when my kids go down for nap time. So I know that there were some other requests, people saying, can I time shift it to like 3.30, 4 o'clock? And I would love to be able to time shift it to get more people on. It's, you know, I've just got a small window, right, of, of while I'm kind of, uh, you know, dad, man in the fort looking after the kids. So I use this, right, time. It's about an hour and a half to get some, some hopefully quality work done. And uh, this is it right here. So for today, a couple of things. I am still a newbie at this, guys. So please... Don't be too harsh with, with, your, with your criticisms. I am getting better, I promise. I'm doing my best. The first cool thing for everyone is if you want to go in your settings, I found this out last week. If you go into your settings and on the video, there is a little option there, and it's one of those, you know, tick it on, tick it off kind of thing, but it's called improve my look. And it basically puts this nice little, like, kind of, like, softener on you. And I noticed it took out some of my big lines. So I was pretty happy about that. So there's my, my free value ad for everyone. If you want to look better on Zoom, click on the, the video uh, and then go ahead and, and make yourself look even better. So there it is. Um, two other things, right? There is a chat. So if you have questions, go ahead. I know that there's an option to do hand raising and I'm going to do my best at, at responding to those folks today. But if you have a thought, a question, a response, you want to chime in, wave your hand because um, it's nice and visual and that way I can kind of unmute you and we'll jump on into your bit of your conversation. And then uh, let me see what else, what else, what else? Oh yeah, this is the free version right now. But I think after this kind of response, we're up to 32. So we've actually broken broken. Oh, 33. Oh, wow. We're, we're doing even better than last time. So I think that I'm going to have to upgrade to the pro version, which will allow me, I think, a little more options. And uh, most importantly, we're, we're at time bound. We got 40 minutes. Zoom is going to boot us all off after 40 minutes. If you want to jump on after that 40 minutes, please do, because we're going to continue chatting. Last time we went for the original 40, and then I think we went for almost another 40 minutes after that. So it was pretty cool. Let me see. I'm just I hear a little bit of background noise. Okay, Aliki, I've just muted you, and let me see if there's anyone else. I think we got rid of it all right there. So we got a pretty cool uh, lineup today, and it's funny because I've been walking around saying to my wife Joanna, and she might join us. She's just on a conference call upstairs right now. Um, I said to her like, "Hun, I'm getting ready for the show. I'm getting ready for the show. Like it's a thing, right? Like I actually have a show that I'm putting on now." Um, but she's like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like. Top of mind. I'm like top of mind Thursdays. I'm like the big show. So we've got four awesome guests lined up for you here today. Uh, so I reached out and this is what I'm going to continue to do on a weekly basis is that I'd like to have some speakers lined up. I'm asking them to share what's top of mind for them. Um, obviously, you know, we all know the story of the, of the days right now and what's, what's happening, but we'll talk a little bit about that, but we've got, uh, Anna Scott is going to be our, our first uh, speaker. And let me just check my lineup right here. Cause I know that I sent it out earlier. So I should be a little more organized. We've got Anna Scott. I know we've got Leanna that's going to be talking today. I've got Grant McDonald that's going to be doing a little bit of a share for us. And we also have uh, John Benitez of Dijon. So in terms of the order, um, Anna is going to be our, our first person. And I met Anna. I mean, I've known about Anna since I've been a Keyspire member. Um, and that's back in 2018. We joined in spring of 2018. That was my wife and myself. I'm now a full-time investor. I've been full-time since... Uh, last summer, um, you know, things are going well for us. This year I had big, big goals and aspirations. 
I don't think any of us saw this one coming. So, you know, things are kind of, we're shifting and pivoting and moving, but I'm still working hard to be able to hit my goals this particular year. Michael says right here, I should get a, uh, a theme song. Yeah, I should. I'm working on a backdrop. I'm working on a theme song. There's a lot of production that needs to be done here, guys. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I hear you on that one. Gary's got a good question. And Gary, let me get to your question on this one. We'll go through some of our speakers a little bit. We'll pose it. Um, and everyone can see some of these questions right here. So fantastic. But uh, let me scroll over and see if Anna is around. Hey, Anna, I saw you earlier. I did see you pop on. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. I can hear you. I just don't see you. Hey, Anna, how you doing? <laughs> I'm very well, thanks. Can everybody hear me okay? Just a thumbs up to say yes or no. Perfect. Uh, so hi, I'm uh, Anna Scott from Waterloo, Ontario. And my husband, Doug, and I have been members of for five years now. Uh, we are long-term investors, and we focus on uh, multifamily properties. And we have a, a combination of, um, well, we're, we're on our eighth property right now, and uh, sixplex, eightplex, several fours, several twos. Um, one of the things we're hoping to do this year is scale up to uh, a little bit higher than the eight. So that's one of our goals for 2020. But uh, when Ray asked me to speak today, uh, first of all, thank you, Ray, for giving me the opportunity to, to talk. Um, I'll go and keep it as uh, uplifting and, and light as I can. Uh, but what was uh, top of mind for, for me is, and, uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, and we had met with uh, and we prepared actually a communication to go to our tenants about the whole COVID uh, situation and in particular uh, wanted to share with them the benefits that the government has introduced for if they are impacted and have reduced hours you know, less, less, uh, um, if there's an, an issue potentially with them not being able to pay rent. But the, uh, the communication that we sent out to them earlier this week, so we met with our joint venture partners. We have, um, of our eight properties, seven are done as a joint venture, the money partners. And so we've met with them, talked to them, share with them that we've drafted. And it really was important for us to share, first and foremost, that we wanted to let them know we were thinking about them. We hope they're all safe or hope they're you know healthy but secondly we wanted to let them know if there was an, an, an issue a maintenance issue that was coming up uh, in one of their units to please continue to let us know um, emergency issues of course will be handled as quickly as we can and that but recognize our service suppliers who are we're needing to call out to may either have reduced hours there may be a delay or there may be some maintenance issues that just simply have to be postponed or delayed. Uh, so we shared with them that in the first opening paragraph of the letter. Uh, the second is we shared with them, uh, if you didn't already know, there's so many government um, benefits and most recently government introduced the uh, emergency response benefit program where they can get up to $2,000, well, $2,000 a month for up to four. Uh, in addition to EI, um, child tax benefits, I don't know if you knew, Government automatically is upping the, um, in May, uh, people who are receiving child tax benefits are going to get an extra $300, things like that. So, but the way we positioned it is we weren't, we didn't want to come across as over saying, okay, we need for you to pay the rent. We said, we, we positioned it in such a way that you have multiple debt obligations of which rent is just one of them. So we said, we wanted you to be aware of what's out there to help you. And also, because you need to continue to be able to pay your, your heat, your hydro. So Hydro One has offered some uh, reductions. The hydro provider where one of our buildings has also offered um, uh, really great programs for people who are low income. So, so many people just don't know what's out there. And well, that's the whole purpose. We wanted to make sure they knew about it. But we said, you know, like you have to still continue to pay your, your credit cards and your um, your your internet your line your internet service your uh, any and all like car payments things like that so we really kind of put it in a larger package to say of which rent is just one of them right and then lastly we said you know reach out to us and we didn't want 
we really debated about saying, you know, you need to make you make sure you get your rent payments. We don't think like we we really assessed and took a look at our tenant profile, and we ch chatted as as uh, as partners and said, do you think there is going to be an issue with any of our buildings with any of our particular tenants? So we were trying to see if there was a possibility that we may be in a position with somebody should we be proactively reaching out to them and offering some support so the short of it is we sent out a general communication just a one page very you know three paragraphs uh, hope you're safe uh, you know abiding by the you know self-isolating all those good things if you have any issues that need to be repaired or you know ask anything that needs to be serviced we will continue to offer that um and and we're there are all the services and benefits take advantage of first and foremost so we had those out earlier in the week uh, we have every confidence that uh, we have a great tenant profile that will pay rent on the first um, all of our properties are not in the Toronto area I know many of you have seen posts in various um, particular parkdale.org and uh, acorn um, signs being posted various communities about rent strike don't pay your rent hold your rent back i recognize that that is a certain group of people and that tenant profile does not paint the broad brush of all and every tenant we have right so um that's really i'm, I'm not as concerned about that because i i did take a look at our tenant mix we've got a lot of retirees we've got a lot of i i was just posting recently that um Somebody had asked about a vacancy. Should we still continue to, to have the uh, vacancies filled? And we have, uh, it's, uh, we've actually been a little more selective about who we're bringing in. We have a two bedroom unit that's vacant right now. We just signed on board a couple, wonderful couple. Um, he works for the grocery store, the local grocery store. So I'm not as worried about tenants not being able to pay their rent. I don't think there will be any situations. If, if anything, it's not April and May, it's now June, potentially July. Mm. that may be of concern because some tenants um who knows what will happen in their industries they're not maybe working now but does that mean that they're going to and especially with the lockdown and all of these businesses um that they're they're now laying off people generally people have you know one to two months worth of of savings but um i'm really I'm hopeful of the benefit program uh, it doesn't mean to qualify. It doesn't mean to you know sign up, prove that you're 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 in a hardship situation. Mm -hmm. So those are the the two things that are really um, were first and foremost for us. The other thing that um, Ray asked me to speak about really quickly was um, the whole mortgage deferral um, situation. So Doug and I are thankfully we're not in a position where we need to take advantage of the mortgage deferral program, largely because all of our properties, we make sure we have reserve funds um, of at least two two months worth of the, if if it ever came to that that we have to pay mortgages, as well as all sorts of um, expenses. We we have at least two two months worth for every property that we have. We have a separate bank account for every property, um, and we also want to make sure that um, you know if it ever came to that. I came from, I worked for financial service in the financial services industry. I was a long time a Manual Life employee. I worked my last seven years, I was at Manual Life Bank. And I know there's been mixed messages and there's been a couple of very vocal, I don't know if you follow as many sites as I do, but many people are saying, oh no, it doesn't affect your credit score. But then other brokers are saying, yes, it does affect your credit mm -hmm. score. The reality is if you, and some plans, some companies actually offer you a skip a month program. But what they didn't tell you is that if, it works if you do prepayments. So every year you can pay up prepay up an additional 20% of some of them are 15, some fit 20 of your mortgage outstanding balance. So where you've been in a position where you have actually prepaid and paid down extra, they have this feature that you can skip a month because you've already paid extra principal, right? Um, but so if in let's say the first month you want to do a mortgage deferral, it really should be because you are in a hardship situation, you're not able to meet your mortgage payment. Um, I hope that all of us would have had the forethought as, as landlords to make sure if it ever came to that, it's, it's, it's just, you know, you, you have the ability to pay any outstanding balances, but um, where it could be, if, if, it's in your, if this lockdown 
prolongs to into the summer, certainly by month four, month five, if it may, if it's difficult for you to pay your mortgage, absolutely investigate. All I'm just saying is that one of the articles that I read, I really, really resonated with because when you skip a payment, um, well, first and foremost, everybody should know nothing's for free and it's mortgage deferral. It's not mortgage um, amnesty. It's not that you'll, you're being able to get it for free. The banks will tack on the interest owing onto your outstanding mortgage balance, which means you're paying interest on interest effectively. And so if you have a, a fixed mortgage and fixed term, the better solution if you, you're going to be um, having a mortgage, having to use a mortgage deferral, is to have a, negoti a conversation, negotiate with your bank to change your amortization period altogether, because then you lower your mortgage payment per month, if that's possible. Um, so the one, one message I just wanted to say is, if you miss a month, miss two months, miss three months, defer it out. Yes, you're paying more longer term, but when you're ready to put, to start paying again, the payments are going to be increased. So are you truly going to be in a position three, four months down the road to be able to pay more, have a higher mortgage payment than what you're paying now? Um, so recognize the message I just want to leave you with is if you feel you need to do this, talk to your service, your financial institution, get the full story. What is this going to mean to you in overall costs? Is your mortgage going to go up substantially? The further you defer it, yes, the higher the payment. And I know there's been several people saying it's not going to affect your credit score. Well, if when you resume after the deferral and your payment is higher and you can't make those payments, then yes, it'll affect your score. The other thing too, as many of you may not know, when you have your formal credit bureau report, there's something called trade lines and there's several different categories. So if you have, let's say, credit cards, you have a rating associated with the type of credit. So credit cards are ours, and you can have R1, 2, 3, 4, R1 being great, 2 meaning you've been longer than 30 days to pay, and R5 is up to 120 days plus. Same goes for mortgage. If you have M1, it means you're paying your mortgage on time. You want to make sure your mortgage classification doesn't go to M2, 3, 4, or 5, right? So that tells me if I'm a private lender I'm looking at somebody's credit bureau report, yeah, your score may not have been altered significantly, but if I see an M2, it means you've been missing your mortgage payment. And I'm going to ask you about that. So yes, this time of we're all in a, it's, it's a, the, the message is make sure if you need to do it, it is because you are in dire straits. I've seen many post people saying, well, if my tenant loses their job or you know, can't pay, then I'm absolutely going to defer more. Understand what it means for you first. And if you can do that and find that, that's great. But don't do it just because your tenant's out of, out of job. So Anna, I think, <clears throat> first off, thank you so much for, for that information. I think it's really, really relevant and it's on a lot of people's minds. And I'm hearing a lot of what you talked about there. So just on a quick summary, and I'll check the, the record and see how well I did. Uh, but the first thing was, it, it's all about communication. So proactively reaching out to those tenants, making that contact, but you're also doing a really good thing, which is reminding them and, and bringing back top of mind. I'm gonna use this as much as possible, and then you guys will hate me for it. Um, top of mind, which is, it's not just the rent, right? You've gotta look after your other financial responsibilities. So, you know, as as people, right, we're, we all need to do that assessment and, and see where we stand. So that's, that's fantastic one. Then you really talked about um, you know, getting into some of the details around the, the deferral and what's happening there and the skip of payment and the prepayment uh, and then extra 20%. And I think that's great because I looked into this morning just in my own personal residence about just skip a payment. It's an option that's available in my mortgage. Let's take a look at it and let's see what's available out there. So I think those are all really good. Um, you touched on one thing that's been on my mind a lot, which is I think that a lot of tenants, like I've reached out to my tenants, they've come back very confidently saying, hey, we're, we're okay, we're gonna continue to pay the rent and we will let you get you know if anything comes up. But Gary posed this question and it's one thing I've been thinking about, which is people might not need help as of April 1, they might need help as of May 1st, June 1st, right? It might be the 60 or 90 day ripple effect that we feel versus the initial 15 days. 
because really things have started to lock down, you know, really in the past couple of weeks, right? Like, and I, I'm tracking it as of last week was March break. My daughter was off school. So that was really our first week of lockdown. Now we're going into, you know, the, the first week of non-March break. Oh, we're getting a couple questions right here. Um, and and uh, I lose my train of thought. I know why Mel doesn't read the comments now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I gotta get better at this. Um, you said it's the one week March break that uh, it's, we've really only been to this one week yet. Yeah, it, it's been about, uh, you know, for Ontario, let's say it's been about two weeks, give or take, right? Everyone be kind with that, with that reference, but about two weeks of us really getting serious, right? They announced, hey, you know, we're gonna close the schools for two more weeks, and that was right before March break. Everyone went to the grocery stores. Everyone started to feel the panic. Everyone started to really, really wake up to, to what the, the reality of the situation was. Um, now, my question right here. So it's posed by Gary. Uh, thanks very much, Gary, for sending this one out right here. But he says, many uh, are concerned, tenants about paying rent for April the 1. Um, have we considered using their last month's rent as a reserve for this? Now, Anna, you talked about, you know, really responsibly having two months reserve uh, for your properties, um, which is which is fantastic. But let's say you're a new investor and you're just getting going. Would you look at doing potentially 50% of their 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 last for a half month and then 50% for another half month? Is that a strategy that you might recommend? Give us some thoughts on that. For for April, I, I would not because legally last month's rent must be applied to last month, and Effect, they're not effectively giving you notice, are they? Because no. that is essentially what last month's rent is for. I would highly encourage them to talk to you about other options before, well, I paid last month, you can use that now. No. Um, if they can't make the payment for April, what makes you think they're going to be able to do it for May? So it really speaks to a larger issue that you need to have the conversation with them to say exactly that. If we do this now, then how are you going to pay me two, three months from now as well? Mm -hmm. So I would ask about them personally, their their hours. Why are they making the request first and foremost? Um, sometimes it's just to see if they can get away with it. Like they need to qualify, so to speak, for any type of of consideration. And are they affected? Do they have the illness? Do they have family members with the illness? Are they off work? How long do they think they'll be off work? Have they applied for the benefits? Have they been, like, it's, they're not gonna be declined or denied the benefits. Within a couple of weeks, people can expect a $2,000 check from the government. So it's, it's unless of course your rents are significantly higher, um, I don't know if any here is in the Toronto audience where the average rents are 2,200, 2,300, like that two grand may not make a huge big difference for them, right? But I think in other communities, it will absolutely help um and the government and we're hoping that things will turn around in the next four to five month period so if things don't i suspect they'll they'll extend this this emergency um benefits program probably into the summer yeah yeah i, I would not and i would have a conversation first about last month okay wonderful um i'm going to keep things rolling and i, I do appreciate you know, not only your expertise, Anna, but sharing for everyone here. Uh, there are some other great questions that, that have come up right here, but I do want to keep rolling, everyone. So we're about 25 minutes into the call, which means in 15 minutes, they're going to boot us off, but jump back on. It's the same meeting room. You just join the same thing, and we'll continue on because we got three more great people um, that are ready to, to speak to it. And then, you know, if anyone wants to raise their hand, like I said, this is an open forum, so I'm trying to keep it loose and add some structure at the same time, right? So move and groove. But we've got uh, Grant McDonald is is our next guy. So I'll unmute you here, Grant. Awesome. You got it. You got it done right there. Um, so Grant, why don't you thanks first off for, for joining, uh, being, you know, being willing to come on uh, top of mind here and, and chat and share with us a little bit. But why don't you share a little bit, you know, quick little 30 second, your story, your background. We've got a lot of new investors here from different communities. So tell us mm -hmm. who you are. Yeah, uh, and I see a ton of familiar faces. I think I probably know a good good portion of you. Um, Grant McDonald, I've uh, been investing for just over four years now. I've been with Peace Fire for about four years as well. Uh, main focus has been uh, multifamily properties, so uh, long-term buy and hold, as well as the uh, the flip to yourself or the burr method. Um, that's kind of been the main uh, main claim to fame, and then also some flips and uh, some other fun stuff, some private lending. So, um, 
yeah, you know what, I, I, Raymond, I don't have a ton to actually provide. I'm not going to be as educational as, uh, as Anna was there because I know she's super analytical and she loves the, uh, <laughs> the details. But uh, I'll tell you a little bit kind of how I'm kind of taking things day to day here. Yeah, please. Um, and, then, uh, and then keep it kind of conversational, guys. If you've got questions you want to chime in or add in, um, feel free to do so. But um, for us, for the most part, we're, uh, we're kind of the whole status quo here. We're just we're keeping a push forward, um, obviously, as safely and responsibly as possible. Um, you know, so we've, we've taken extra measures, uh, we've taken extra measures on the job site, uh, when it comes to our contractors, um, you know, in terms of, I don't want a bunch of guys different working on the same site where they're stepping over each other with in close proximity. Um, so we've done certain things like that where, you know, I currently have got a plumber at one site, I've got an electrician on another site. Um, you know, they're, they're working in isolation. Uh, but the main thing is, is these are small business owners, you know, they're self-employed, they still want to be working. Um, so they're not on the site with 10 or 20 different people. So, so they feel comfortable with it. Um, I feel comfortable with it as well. And we've had the conversations in terms of, you know, proper washing, hand washing, sanitizing, all that kind of stuff. So, um, but with all said and done, I mean, it's, it is an essential service. You know, what we're doing is providing housing. Uh, I think even more so now than ever, uh, you know, what I'm working on are rental properties and people are going to need a good rental properties and good, um, you know, people losing their jobs, they are going to be probably selling their homes. Um, to try to get some, uh, some get some liquid cash, right, to free up. Um, so these are people that are going to be looking for, uh, you know, suitable apartments. So uh, I think it's kind of our duty to, if you're doing rental properties, uh, to keep kind of providing that service to them. And uh, again, just making sure you're doing it as safely and responsible as possible. That being said, everything changes on a daily basis nowadays. So uh, depending what new regulations or restrictions or, you know, limitations are put out, we'll, uh, we just kind of play it day by day here. But um, for the most part, we're, we're pushing forward as best as possible. Um, we're starting to see some slowdowns and hiccups um, just in terms of some scheduling uh, as well as ordering. Um, so with some of the big suppliers that we use in terms of getting um, components, you know, you know, plumbing fixtures, MCO, stuff like that, a lot of people aren't working in offices now. Um, so we're starting to get a little bit of a backlog and obviously that's gonna get worse and worse as we go. But uh, I think for me, it's even, it's even more important to kind of keep forging forward as best as possible right now. Um, because I, I mean, none of us, none of us really know what the, uh, what the future holds here within the next few weeks or few months. So, um, but I think it's super important. And again, this is why I'm kind of happy, you know, Raymond pulled this together and that's why I wanted to hop on too, because, um, you know, it, it, it's super easy to get caught up in, in a lot of the negativity, the news, you know, on Facebook I and mean, everything you see is just, you know, rants and negativity. And it's, uh, it's, it's super important to kind of stay focused on what it is that you're doing, uh, you know, surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, again, real estate, it's, it's tangible. People need a place to live no matter what. It's one of the necessities. So, so we're going to be, uh, you know, we're going to be okay, but it's going to be a little bit turbulent. Again, we don't know what, uh, what it's looking like, but uh, I, think, I think that's it. Just, you know, keep surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Keep having these conversations. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so good to have a sense of community like this where we can reach out and kind of continue to support each other if and when questions come up and, and you name it, right? So, um, and again, I think, you know, Anna touched on a few good parts there in terms of, uh, you know, the, the whole mortgage deferral stuff. Um, you know, uh, I'm using that as a very, very, very last resort. Uh, I've always been a huge advocate for cash flow properties, guys. Um, and, and those of you who know me and who I've had a chance to meet throughout the workshops and some of those things, um, I'm always preaching about getting cash flow in properties and, uh, you know, again, this is totally unexpected. It's something we could have never predicted, but it's uh, it just shows you it's, it's that much important to, to be able to have, you know, a bit of a slush fund, a bit of a contingency built up for vacancies, repairs, maintenance, et cetera. But if you've got a cash flowing property and you enabled it to kind of build up, um, you know, you're not necessarily living month to month, 110% dependent on that rent coming in. Um, you know, most people would have typically a lot of certain amount of money, you know, whether it be, you know, a month or two or whatever, to kind of help sustain things. So we shouldn't have to be digging into, you know, your emergency fund at this point in time. Um, if you do, then, then that's, you know, you've got to do what you got to do. But uh, I think moving forward in terms of strategy, uh, you know, put a little more, uh, put a little more preference on, on finding some good cash flow profitable properties because it'll help kind of weather the storm when, when shit like this goes on, right? So yeah, big time. Um, I think, I think that's pretty well it. You know, Anna touched a ton of, uh, a ton of stuff there. One note I read last night, and it was from a very reputable uh, paralegal, um, Harry Fine, for those that, that know him. Um, he posted something yesterday, which was really interesting. 
Um, if you're having any types of communications with your tenants, um, do not use the term discounted rent. If they're re requesting um, for the rent to be discounted, uh, whatever you do, when, whether it's verbal or in writing, and this applies to Ontario, I'm not sure. I know some folks, I see uh, Chris and some people from BC and Alberta. Um, you know, I, I don't know how it applies out there, but I guess in terms of Ontario, if you use the term discounted, um, they could then take that moving forward, kind of locks you in, like based on some of the wording that's mm. in the uh, residential and tenancy agreements. So uh, just a little tidbit. And we're, again, we're starting to see more and more of these things pop up. Um, Let's face it, this is all unexplored terrain for all of us. So it's, uh, again, super, super important to kind of stick together in this. And every day is a little bit different. And uh, I think even more so than ever, this is important to kind of, uh, I'm not sure how often you're going to schedule these, but it's, uh, it's a good opportunity. So thank you. Yeah, awesome. Um, well, thank you, Grant. So, I mean, you know, having you come on, right, as an, an investor that's done, you know, I'll say mildly, pretty well for himself over four years, right? Like, uh, you know, I, I was I was pretty impressed when I kind of learned about Grant McDonald and what he's been able to do. And I remember reaching out in one of our first phone calls. Um, but having you on here is fantastic, right? Because we do have a mix. We've got, you know, new investors that are on the line. We've got great experienced investors with large portfolios. We've got people that are middle of the road that are building their portfolios. So having this this kind of call and community I think is great and you know I'm not the expert right here all I am is the facilitator I'm the guy that you know throws up the sign and says hey everyone jump on the line 2 30 on Thursdays and then I kind of bring you know everyone who can into the mix right here so um, it, it is huge and we're gonna keep these rolling I'm gonna keep doing these on Thursdays as much as we can and hopefully people can jump on so that's the good news now a couple things you talked about being safe as you guys are pushing forward and yes um, construction, renovation, it is a, it's an essential service right now. So we're able to, to keep on things moving. And you said you've got your guys working independently. So you, your responsibility there. So are you checking, like, give us an idea of how you're following up with that uh, to make sure that the guys are, are, you're not on the job site, they're on the job site. So how are you making sure those protocols are in place that you're protecting yourself, them, and everyone else in that community? Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I think I'm fortunate that I have a lot of the same people uh, for several years now. It comes to my electricians, my plumbers, my HVAC guys, uh, pretty well use these same, you know, installers, suppliers. Um, you know, they're, they're small business owners like me. They're, these aren't the companies that have, you know, 50 plumbers on staff. It's usually, you know, the owner plus, uh, plus one other guy. So um, with some of these companies, they've, they've actually, just for their own precautions, they've done some layoffs and they've uh, kind of eliminated some of their staff and they're just kind of going in on their own. Um, they're kind of self-policing and I'm, I'm, I'm really proud and that everyone seems to be taking this really seriously. Um, so it's not me having to, you know, kind of nag or, or to check in on them and make sure they're doing it. I know that they're doing it. Um, they're in there and when I do stop in, they're, they're by themselves. Um, you know, they've got their, they've got their own little kit now of, of some spray and some, uh, some Lysol wipes. And um, so it's good. And I think everyone's kind of taken uh, some responsibility. In it. Um, I think I answered the question there. Yep, I think so too. And I even see people are, are commenting saying this is this is going really well. So I appreciate that. Cool. Um, now a reminder everyone, we got four minutes left and you can see my powerhouse has <laughs> just stepped in, right? So Joe is here, right? And you know, I was I was chatting with someone the other day and I said, you know, Joe is really she she drives a lot of what happens in terms of BB and Co. And you know, I'm the face guy, right? And it was funny because I was <laughs> chatting with Leanna. Face. I am. I'm, I'm the face and the voice guy, right? Sometimes the voice is better than the face, but you know, you never know. Um, but I was talking with Leanna the other day, and, and uh, Leanna's going to come up, and she's going to chat with us a little bit. She's a flipper, uh, Ontario-based, and she'll tell us a little bit about kind of her perspective. But I said, you know, I've made a, a, a lifetime out of making a fool of myself, and now it's really easy for me to get up in front of people and do it. So it's like, it's where I'm really, really comfortable. Um, so we'll get to Leanna, but I do want to make a comment right here that I'm seeing some great stuff coming from Darren. So Darren, it's great to have you on the call. Thank you so much. Um, it, maybe we'll unmute you for a quick second because I see that you just thrown up uh, a post recently. You got a new show. I think you've been doing some vacation and traveling. So welcome back to Canadian soil. But maybe give us a little bit of what's going on. And I appreciate you sharing some stuff here. Um, so yeah, tell us what's happening with you real quick. Um, hey, everybody. Um, first of all, Grant, thanks so much. Uh, Anna, great to see you guys uh, virtually, if nothing else. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, just returned from three months of travel, um, perfectly timed actually, uh, just as the prime minister was announcing that we should all come home as Canadians. 
And uh, since then, yeah, we've all been in isolation mode. So it's given me a good opportunity to sort of check in on my business and really sort of uh, create some new content and, um, and just start to organize things. And that's really what's most important in these downtimes is just assessing your business and trying to figure out how you can maximize it. So that's what I've been doing. And I just attached the communication I just sent out to my tenants. I know Anna had talked about hers as well. And it was almost exactly word for word what Anna had mentioned. And I think it's just really important to stay ahead of things and be in communication with your tenants. And uh, just, just manage your business as we all do. And there's some, some great people in this group. And thanks again, Ray, for organizing this. This is great. And let's keep it going. And I don't want to take up uh, too much of Leanna's time here. So. Awesome. Well, that, that's great. Thanks so much, Darren. And I appreciate you uploading that. And I love jumping on this forum because I said to Leanna as well, like it's my chance to level up on Zoom. Like we're doing so much more Zoom. Last night we did a cocktail party with my sister. She sent an invite. We just, it was myself, my sister, my cousin. We sat around and we just chatted. My sister is self-isolating right now. So, you know, she was probably a little bit bored, right? But it, this is a great opportunity to master a new tool. And I think this is going to be a lot of our futures, right? These kind of uh, forums and, and uh, meetings and whatnot. Okay. An hour and what do we have? Minute yeah, and twenty. Minute, minute and twenty left. Okay, so please jump back on. I'm gonna I'm gonna check. We have forty three people, so we'll do a little check and see, right? But um, yeah, we'll jump on and uh, we'll do Leanna next. So I should really do this like twenty minutes or forty minutes for two, and then forty minutes for the next two. I think it'll be the format. Um, but let's open it up to Leanna at this point in time. I'm gonna unmute you. And did it work? Unmute. Good. Hey, Leanna. Hi everyone, I hope everyone is doing well, staying healthy, being positive. Crazy time, what can, what we can do? I'm sure Great. we'll go through and as Grant said, there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel, right? So I'm not sure how much I can add after such a great speakers. <laughs> I've been an investor for a few years, I have six properties. Um, one of them is student rental, which we just completed and refinanced and guess what, we have a hard time feeling because people don't want to live in co-living co now. Mm. Student rental, it's a common area and people don't want to even come for showing. So there is hold on that. Um, our concentration, they're mostly sleeping. And we have two projects on the go now. One is in Kitchener. Uh, it's slowed down a lot because we have to take precautions. Uh, we cannot have more